ladies and gentlemen, to a special premiere of EPSMF Fight Night! My name is Isaiah Dada, your one and only referee. Our ambassadors have worked tirelessly to bring you this event. Tonight, you will see the best musical symbols go head to head in battle. With my help, John in the studio and Ryan on the sidelines, we will bring you a full assessment of each contestant's strengths and weaknesses. You will surely become a fan of these musical symbols competing tonight. Each of them has a unique set of skills and weaknesses that give music its beauty. Without further ado, let's head to John in the studio to introduce our first fighters. John? Thank you for joining us. In the first corner, straight from the classical era, weighing in at an embarrassing 10 pounds, puts with an unusually outstanding record of 24 wins and only two losses, give it up for Crescendo. As you see Crescendo walking down the aisle, notice how he is super small in stature. However, don't let his size fool you. He is rumored to grow taller than a giant during his fights. Stick around and see for yourself. Born in the 17th century, Crescendo has always loved to make his voice louder and louder when having conversation, ultimately yelling at who he's talking to. Let's just hope he isn't all bark and no bite out in the octagon. Off to you, Ryan. What a wonderful night for a fight, guys. Am I right? Well, our next contestant seems like the complete opposite of Crescendo, but surprisingly, they come from the same hometown of the classical era. Weighing in at a whopping 350 pounds, and with a record of a humiliating 0 wins and 32 losses, the hairpin weapon, De Crescendo. Take a look, folks. De Crescendo looks exactly like his opponent, but just facing the opposite direction. What a coincidence. People say that he has a tendency to start off guns blazing, swinging at his opponents at full force. But after a few minutes, De Crescendo usually gets tired and runs out of gas. Probably why he's lost so much. Nevertheless, each fight is a toss-up, so stay tuned to see who wins. Back to you, Isaiah. Alright guys, before the fight begins, let's get a little more technical describing these two musical symbols. Prior to the classical era, the Baroque era featured terrace dynamics, where there were sharp changes from one dynamic to the other. Composers in the classical era broke this norm, using the gradual changes of dynamics to get their desired volume. Each of these markings are denoted by a hairpin-like drawing. The composer has the ability of deciding how long a crescendo or decrescendo can last. All that the composer has to do is draw the marking over a longer set of notes to elongate the duration of the dynamic change. These two markings help create dynamic swells or plateaus in music. Well, without further ado, let's see the fight! Symbols ready? 3, 2, 1, FIGHT! Wow, what a fight that was! Crescendo started a bit shaky, but ultimately pulled ahead for the win. Next up, we have a new set of competitive symbols bound to captivate the eyes of the audience with their fighting ability. Just like De Crescendo and Crescendo, these two symbols are polar opposites of each other. Coming from the early Baroque period, here is our first contestant. Weighing in at 160 pounds, just out of a 25 game winning streak, the smooth soldier, Legato. Be sure to look out for Legato's long arms. He is able to connect a hit on his opponent from 5 feet away. His punches are smooth and flowing, yet as deadly as the sound of a viola. All jokes aside, let's join Ryan as he introduces our next opponent. Thanks John. As fierce as Legato seems, I'm afraid that this next competitor might have the edge over him. Although he is vertically challenged, his swift fighting style is unmatched. From the same hometown as Legato, Weighing in at 130 pounds with a win-loss record of 29 to 1, the knee-high ninja, Staccato. Don't be fooled by his height, Staccato's punches are super fast. His strategy is simple, hit him with a hard punch, back away, then punch again. This disconnected style has proved to work wonders for him. I actually spoke to Staccato while he was training for this fight. He said, and I quote, that Legato's duration in the octagon will be short-lived. I love this kind of confidence coming from Staccato. It goes to show you just how to the point he is. Truly a great fight coming in guys. Over to Isaiah. On to the fine-tuned details about these two marvelous individuals. 
Both staccato and legato are articulation marks, used to denote how long to hold a note. They tell a musician how much silence to leave in between notes. Notes marked with a staccato, with a dot above them, are played short and detached. Legato notes, marked with a line connecting them, are played sustained, without space. A great example of notes played staccato are heard in the main bass part of Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. The first three notes of the riff are played staccato. These two articulations, staccato and legato, are important because they help the conductor express his or her emotions through the music. Alright guys, let's head to the fight. Staccato ready? Legato ready? Okay. Three, two, one, fight! What a spectacular showdown that was. Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to our last bout of the night and it's sure to be the best one yet. These next fighters are held to a high esteem and are respected all throughout the music community as a sign of virtuosity. And I have the great privilege of introducing our first fighter. His rapid movements and quick fighting style has made his past opponents tremble before him. Hailing from the early 17th century, weighing in at a solid 210 pounds and a record of 18 wins, five losses and three ties, give it up for the master of motion, Tremolo. It is amazing how he can keep up with his opponents by only using a single move, but in quick succession. Tremolo is so fast that at times he can appear to be a blur to his opponents. Lucky for us, we have slow-mo, but that's not the case for his competitor. Let's bring it back to Ryan. I don't know about you guys, but Tremolo seems like the type of dude that I wouldn't want to mess with. But hey, that's exactly what this next fighter is going to do. Although definitely not as quick as Tremolo, his footwork is quite impeccable and he can slide from position to position with ease. Also hailing from the early 17th century, weighing in at a slim 135 pounds, and making his professional debut in the United States, let's make some noise for Glissando. Don't sleep on his rookie status though, he has slid into this card for a reason. He is best known for his use of the slide sweep, he is sure to keep Tremolo on his toes. Glissando can go from one side of the court to the next in a split second. Both these fighters are fast in their own respect, and we are in for a great final fight. Take it over, Isaiah. Alright, let's do this technical thing one more time. In music, tremolo and glissando are both considered ornaments that decorate the music. A tremolo, which is usually played by three dashes through the stem of a note, is the extremely rapid repetition of a single note. Although only one note, a tremolo creates the sensation of motion. There are two types of tremolo, measured tremolo and unmeasured tremolo. A measured tremolo is played in subdivisions of the beat, meaning it is played in time. An unmeasured tremolo is simply played as fast as possible. Now to glissando. Simply put, a glissando is a continuous slide up or down between two notes. A glissando is written in music by either a straight or wavy line that is connecting two notes. When a trombone makes that funny sliding noise, that is glissando. Both tremolo and glissando are effective in achieving the wow factor in performance. Now, without further ado, I present to you the moment you've all been waiting for. Tremolo versus glissando. Tremolo, are you ready? Glissando, are you ready? Okay, three, two, one, fight! Okay, how awesome was this series of fights? For those at you at home, we hope you enjoyed these features here on EPSMF Fight Night. On behalf... Oh, uh... It seems like we're having a bit of technical difficulty reaching John back at the studio. So I guess I'll have to do the honors of signing us off. All right. On behalf of John Esparza, Isaiah Ed Uh, John Ryan. Uh, on behalf... Uh, on behalf of the, the EPSMF. John Esparza and Ryan Esparza, I am Isaiah Rado, wishing you all to stay safe and stay healthy.
never stop learning, and we will see you next time.